this time on the UK Bro Project, its left-handed giant. The story of left-handed giant begins in Italian Yate in October 2012. Um, Richard Paul began brewing beer in his garage on an exceedingly small scale, and we're talking about litres here. He had won previously awards at homebrewing events for the beers he'd been producing, and he wanted to take it up a step. In January 2013, he founded his brewery, Rocket Science Craft Ales. He spent the next few months working on recipes, along with working with a design agency to create his branding. Um, with a name like Rocket Science, it wouldn't surprise you to know all the beers uh, were space themed named. And the logo was a rocket, which actually reminds me slightly of the rocket from Tintin Goes to the Moon. Um, not sure you got influence there or not. Uh, Rocket Science's first commercial beers were brewed, bottled and distributed all by Rich in May 2013 to some Bath and Bristol shops and pubs. This was all whilst he was still doing his full-time job, or should I say four-fifths of the time as he got his work days reduced down to four days out of five. The first beers were IO IPA and Jet Black. Um, Sadly, as far as I'm aware, none of the beers from Rocket Science are made by Left Handed Giant, but that doesn't mean that Left Handed Giant beers are not the evolution of Rocket Science. And, wow, any excuse for a beer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open an ex a beer from Left Handed Giant and I'm gonna open up the Dreamhouse Hazy Pale 5.9% uh, just over here. I love the um, artwork on these cans. All right, I'm going to pour it into a non uh, LHG uh, branded glassware. So try and hide the brand in slightly. Let's get this poured out and it will take two thirds. And perhaps I'll move these over so this one can sit next to the one I'm actually going to be drinking. And what we have here is obviously a trademark Pale Ale Cloudy. Um, Nice nose, nice aroma. Just looking to see, it does nicely say the hops that are in it. So we have Citra Cryo, which is the ones that have been frozen uh, to get more of the uh, bitterness out from the buds. Uh, Galaxy, Mosaic, and Vi uh, Vic Secret. Not heard of Vic Secret before. Does smell good. Smells like a pale ale, but hoppy one. Let's tuck in. That is good. That is good. That is, um, that's what you're expecting for a nice hoppy uh, pale ale there. Really nice. I think the main hop that does it for me is Mosaic. Uh, mosaic is in there on Galaxy maybe, but yeah, the, the, the Citra isn't in there overpowering, but you're getting your Galaxy Mosaic as the main flavoured hops coming through. That is really nice uh, beer from them. So by July, uh, with growing demand, it was time for Rich to upgrade his equipment and he purchased a 150 litre mash tun. Um, it should be said alongside this, Rich was growing um, hops out in his uh, garden area and he was using these in some of his beers as well. Um, his beers were starting to gain attention across Bristol and his range of beers increased uh, with um, Hefeweizen's, double IPAs, Imperial Stouts, um, Belgian Blondes, literally anything. He was going into all of the ranges. Uh, he attended beer festivals and visited premises in Bath and Bristol in order to sell his beers. And it was during one of these sales visits, things would change for him. Let's take the other side of the story. Bruce Gray was working up in Edinburgh in 2009 and he was managing some bars. Until in 2010, he took the opportunity to open and manage the first brew dog bar in Aberdeen. Um, this was Bruce's introduction to the craft beer scene. And over the next two years, he helped uh, launch and open seven more brew dog bars across the UK. 
After this, he left Brewdog and he founded his own company, which was wholesaling craft beer throughout Scotland. And he also opened up a pub in Edinburgh called The Hanging Bat uh, with some friends. After only a year of doing this, he sold his shares in both companies and he moved south down to Bristol, where he opened um, a place called Small Bar, which is a venue that was selling craft beer from independent brewers around the UK, along with some of the international beers that are renowned, so the Belgium, uh, Germans and American craft beers. At the back of Small Bar, they'd also installed a 200 litre microbrewery. Um, with the hope of perhaps having breweries come in and brew on their small batches and um, they would be able to then sell them in the bar. So Bruce was sitting with Jack Granger, who I assume at this stage was the manager of the small bar. And Rich walked in and handed him some of his beers. They loved it and began selling their, um, his beers in their bar. During the course of 2014, they had many chats with Rich as he dropped off his beer and these discussions went up a notch as Bruce began to realise the potential for them to take over the selling and distributing of the beers and allow Rich to just brew because he wasn't very much into the business side. He was loving the brewing side, not having to do the business side of it. It took many discussions and drinks before they convinced Rich to hand in his notice to his job and join their brewing operations full time. On the 4th of January, 2015, left-handed giant brewing was founded with Rich as the head brewer, Bruce was in charge of distribution and Jack as the operations director. The brewery very much began operating as a gypsy brewery um, for its first few years with Rich going out to surrounding breweries to make collaboration brews or occasionally using the equipment um, to make LHG beers themselves and also doing some brews back in the 200 litre kit um, in the bar. Now, I know one of the first beers a uh, left-handed giant uh, made was with Arbor Ales and it was an Imperial Coffee Stout. Um, I don't have that, but uh, looky, looky down here. I do have something else though. I do have an Imperial Stout called Double Matrix. Um, and that would do. It's close enough to what their first beer was. Let's put it in. So they've done a dot matrix before, and this is double dot matrix. Now, it's not double in ABV as far as I'm aware. I think it's just double in the flavors. Let's get this poured out. I'm looking forward to smelling this one mainly because of what it is. Now I'm just going to put it there. I'm trying not to smell it moving the can around there. I was just holding off. Right, let's take a nose. Mm, quite a lot of uh, coffee on the nose. But I'm just looking. I thought I said milk there for a minute and I was just reading something else. So this is supposed to be a uh, black cherry and chocolate stout with vanilla. I'm getting a lot of the stoutness, bit of chocolate and a bit of coffee as well. Um, let, let's tuck in and try it. Oh, ho, ho. that's good. It's good. I'm getting the vanilla, getting the chocolate, not getting the black cherry, um, but that's fine. That's fine. Chocolate vanilla stout, perfect for me. That is that is good. The only downside for me is I think maybe it's a bit too carbonated. Um, there's a lot of carbonation in there and it may be a case of letting it lose a bit of that carbonation before I, uh, I'm going to swallow it over here a second. There's so much carbonation coming off that. Um, 
I'll leave that to settle down a bit, but I definitely think if it loses some of that, it might be better. Um, so during the course of their second year, which was 2016, um, they'd sort of seen how well they were doing and um, they'd made a decision, not an easy one, a difficult decision to build and found their own brewery. Um, so they uh, located a warehouse in St. Phillips in Bristol and they began the expensive journey of kitting it out. Now they have a blog post laying out all their costs and the reason for buying from where they did and what they did. So I'm not gonna go into that here, but what I will say is they had a two and a half thousand liter brew, brew kit um, installed with four fermenters and a bottling line as well. Um, it took a long time to get that all done because it was custom built, brand new. Um, but by, 2000, uh, by September 2017, they were ready to begin brewing on their new equipment. Um, it seems at this stage, they also seem to purchase a canning line, which wasn't in their original plans. So a bit of extra expenditure, but they bought a canning line and that's where they've started then using. Um, I haven't seen as much bottling at that stage. It seemed to have gone full on can. Got to go back to it. A bit less carbonation there, but I've got to just get a bit more out of it. Um, but things seem to go too well. Things seem to go too well. And uh, by Feb 2018, the new brewery was already at full capacity and they were anticipating sales of a million pounds for that year. The team rather than, want, rather than put in more debt on the business, they turned to crowdfunding to help expand uh, by building, uh, the plans were to build a brew pub in central Bristol, which would more than double their existing brewing capacity, while also opening up a new brewery tap room. They were looking to raise 450,000 pounds via the crowdfunding, um, as I say, rather than over leveraging with the banks. Within five hours of going live, with the crowdfunding, they'd raised 400,000 pounds. And uh, by the end, they had more than double their target, raising just over 1 million pounds. Now I know they did go back to investors and ask for additional funds later on because it uh, was costing more than they expected for some of the stuff. Um, and it did take a long time to get set up. But after a year, the new brew, top, uh, brew pub doors opened and that was on the 13th of Jan, 2019. So they officially have two breweries now um, and you can see this marked on the can. So this one will say um, LHG Brew Pub. So that says Brew Pub on it. Whereas all the rest I've got here are just LHG or Left Handed Giant, um, which just signals these are come from the non-brew pub and these are the brew pub ones. Um, but yeah, it's, it's handy so you can track it down. Um, and it all seemed to be going well for them. Then 2020 rolled round. At a stroke, they lost 50% of their turnover and had furlough 35 staff. Thankfully, on their side, not much beer was wasted. We had uh, kegs being put into sort of growlers and sold on to customers. Um, to make matters worse, uh, they'd already leased out a bigger um, unit next door to their uh, brewery. Um, they leased out the previous year as part of their crowdfunding success and were moving to a bigger brewing facility there. Um, so they were building a bigger brewery with three additional um, fermenting vessels and they were adding two 60 hectolitre brewing tanks, uh, which was bringing their capacity, um, including the brew pub, up to I think 4,000 hectolitres a year. Crazy numbers. But they were now in effect paying double rent for the brewery. Um, so what they decided to do, they decided to complete their move and put the existing old brewery up for sale with all its fixtures and fittings to reduce their overheads. Now, selling the brewery site on with all the fixtures and fittings was cheaper than having to strip it bare and return it to its original conditions back to the owners. Thankfully, they managed to find a buyer and a new town park, a new brewery, moved in there. It's been a year since then 
and the brewery has like everywhere else in the UK opened up only to lock down again near Christmas and then finally open up once again in uh, 2020 May time. So we'll go on to core beers now from the brewery. As a craft brewer, you won't expect many core beers, but the brew pub do, does offer two core beers. They offer a California lager, which is a 4% uh, steam style lager. And they have Sky, Alo uh, Sky Above, which is a 4.5% session pale ale. But otherwise, um, they don't have the core range as such, uh, but they do have a few core styles, which they produce beers in. So for left-handed giant, their core styles are hazy IPAs and hazy pale ales with some sours and obviously stouts thrown in for good measure. Much, much smoother now. That carbonation has definitely dropped off much smoother. Um, we're on to awards. So the most recent award for them, I would say, is Rate Beer the website has put them in the top 10 breweries in the world for 2021, um, which is a big one to win, meaning it's voted for by the users of Rate Beer, which is independent uh, website in a sense. And uh, that that is a good accolade to have and can help with exports, which is a good element for them to recover from the year that they've had. Um, they've won lots of awards as well at local uh, Bristol beer festivals, um, but I'm not going to go into them because they're more localised rather than national awards. But yeah, that, that's all of it. I couldn't find many big national awards for them, but this is Left Handed Giant. Left, yeah, Left Handed Giant. I don't know what I was saying there. I was thinking of Brew Pub as well. And this has been the UK Brewery Project. Until next time, take care, guys.